Hi, it's Dan here from Flexible, and today I'm gonna to show you how to create a webhook or a catch hook inside Zapier. Let's get stuck in. So if you're a lead gen, you probably are aware that it's super important to be able to pass data from one place to another. Um, most importantly, from your landing page or wherever you're capturing your data over to your client CRM, and you wanna be able to do that really, really fast. When you're able to pass that data quickly to the client, it allows, it gives your client a better chance of obviously um, hitting the lead, calling it, SMSing it, or doing whatever it takes to be able to convert that lead into a sale. So if you can make that job easier between your, you know, yourself and your lead gen pages over to your clients, then you're obviously gonna be able to uh, offer a better service to your client and also they're gonna make more sales and they're gonna keep buying from you. So me being uh, pretty tech unsavvy, I wanted to pass you over to Graham, my tech guy, who's gonna show you exactly how to do this in a super easy way that anyone can replicate. Um, I hope you enjoy and I'll see you on the other side. Hey guys, thanks Dan for passing me over. Um, so yeah, so today we're gonna to go through how to make a webhook and a catch hook inside Zapier. Now this is extremely uh, important if you're doing lead gen and you've got to send um, a lot of leads to different clients. Um, most of them are gonna want it uh, kind of like API'd into their CRM. So I'm just gonna show you um, where you can do this via Zapier. You can do it in other ways. So I know on, if you're using leads hook, there's a, a really good webhook node there. There's also a webhook node inside high level as well. Um, and most lead distribution softwares will, will be able to do this as well, such as Leadbyte. Um, it's gonna all do it brilliantly. I, I'm gonna do it in Xavier because it's just um, a very simple way of doing it and you can kind of get the overview of how to do it. And once you know that, uh, you should be able to do it in these other softwares because uh, they're very, very similar. So um, first off, uh, I'm gonna show you the catch up because it's probably the easiest one. Um, this basically helps you uh, to speak between two different systems. So we just look here at this one I made earlier. Um, so the way we set up a catch hook is you wanna create a zap um, and on your trigger, it, you should pick webhooks by Zapier. Just getting get in and edit it. So yeah, so you wanna pick uh, webhooks by Zapier and you want to select uh, catch hook here, not the catch hook raw. Normally I just, I just use catch hook. Um, press continue. Uh, I don't normally put something in there, so you can leave that blank. Um, and then what you'll find is you'll get this URL, okay? Uh, so we got, you, you want to copy that. And what this does is basically it's just a URL that you put in any of your uh, marketing uh, so like leads hook, high level, unbounce, that kind of thing. Um, you can use this to catch all the data that passes through like workflows or things like that. Um, so for example, if I just get up this quickly. Um, so this is a really quick uh, demo that I did. Um, you can put this node anywhere in a workflow. So say they hit a certain uh, criteria inside your workflow, either they've replied or they've um, uh, answered a certain question correctly and their custom field updates to that. You can add in this uh, catch hook, which is very simple. It's just basically a webhook node. Um, and then you can just call it a Zapier catch hook. Uh, the method is post um, and you just post it to this URL. Now this hooks the data and brings it into this zap, um, which then you can start to use the user data. Now, once you've added this in, you're gonna to want to send um, a lead through. Uh, so I've already done that, but you can just do this by having a test lead there, um, selecting them there, and press add to campaign workflow, press okay, proceed, and then you select your um, workflow here, and then just add in a bit of information about it and you just add them to the campaign and workflow that sends it through give it about 30 seconds and then you can go and uh, test the trigger this is what I did earlier so I've tested it it's brought all the data that is in that profile is hooked and brought into Zapier and, and you can use it okay and this is when you can now send it to wherever you want basically 
Um, so if your client uh, is on active campaign or they've got a, a, a known CRM in Zapier, you can send it there um, like so. So it's very simple. Uh, you, you know, you set up your uh, CRM if you can get access to theirs. Um, perfect. This could also put it into another one of your CRMs that you have. And then you can add in uh, the details that come through just to show you the details that have come through. Um, so we've got all the UTMs associated with that uh, contact, um, contact ID, first name, email, all their tags, the uh, address. That's just what's attached to their um, their record inside high level. And then you can send it anywhere, basically. Um, so it's very simple to use a catch hook. Uh, if you don't have any apps in here that... Um, you can like like your clients using then you can then use the webhook again to send it out to your any client CRM basically um, that's what I'm going to show you now okay so the catch hooks the easy bit and I'm just going to show you how to do the webhook now okay so it's a little bit more tricky and a little bit more uh, know how is needed when using the webhook um, so I'm just going to go into this example that I've done here. Um, so it's from a just a simple unbound submission. Um, I've connected it up so it will send it into my lead bite account. Um, so to trigger, it'll be whatever you want it to, to be tr triggered by. If it's if you're using a an app that is in the Zapier store, um, so unbounce is in there. Go high level is in there. Um, what else is in there? Lee Le Le is in there. I I personally um, I personally would be using the catch hook purely because I find it a bit more um, accurate and a bit more reliable than some of these apps they have in there. Um, but it's up to you. You you you're perfectly within your rights to use this. We we do as well on some on some things. Unbounce is actually pretty good. Uh, and then basically, yeah, you, you want to go through, it's on a new form submission, um, choose your account, set up the trigger, which is the page that uh, your form is on, and then you test the trigger, uh, like so. And that it brings through all this data that is in, in your form, basically. And also, uh, I think it brings through a lot, a lot of um, the, like the conversion API data for Facebook, um, which is pretty cool. Uh, next up, I actually, I like formatting some of the data that comes through uh, purely because some CRMs require uh, your data to be in certain formats. So for for instance, I find a few of them don't like it when an email is uppercase. Uh, so I just make sure that uh, it's all lowercase, uh, which is quite simple to do. Uh, and if it's a full name coming through, I split it out into kind of like first and last. Um, I don't need it on this one because I've only asked for first name in this, but I have that as well. And sometimes, like if you're getting postcodes or phone numbers through, uh, you may want to format it into a certain way that their CRM takes it. Um, you don't always need to, um, but it's important to do that if your client CRM uh, requires it. Uh, so yeah, done the split name. This is just a standard formatter by Zapier, um, and then you can do anything like date, time, numbers. Uh, utilities um, yeah so very, very simple to use so I have these two in there and then finally this is where we web hook, web hook it to where we, where we where we want it to go so I ideally the clients CRM uh, so you obviously you want to select web hooks by Zapier uh, you have to have a premium premium account to use this by the way um, and you want the event post uh, there's a few others in there so you can get you can get get and put but don't get too too confused off, off by that just normally if you're posting if you're posting the lead you are posting it uh to their crm so uh here is an example web hook into my lead bite account so lead bite will is very much so it's a lead distribution software um so well when you would use lead bite is you would send leads to lead bite and then they would all go into one campaign and in that campaign would distribute it to different clients. Okay. Um, I'm using lead by in this sense as the end customer, basically. Um, 
this is where I'm sending it. Uh, and lead by are buying the leads off me in this uh, fake scenario. Um, so every time a form is submitted, I want to send that lead to lead by. Okay. Now, normally when you're setting up the webhook for a client CRM, they will give you uh, a posting document, or you should ask every time for a posting document. Uh, and they should give, they'll either get their tech guy to send over a document, which is normally about two pages, pretty simple. Um, nothing too long or, or anything like that. And there's a couple of things that you want to make sure that you've got there. Uh, and the first one is a posting URL. This is the URL you're going to be posting your data to. Okay. Normally it will have leads in there somewhere or, you know, add a lead or something like that. Um, and it will, you know, have their kind of like client name in it, but they'll send you the URL. You just copy and paste that URL into here. Okay. Uh, now the next up is, uh, most come in JSON or XML format. Now, if we would, if we were scripting this, uh, you would need different, uh, script types. Um, but in Zapier, it's just fine. They write the code for you. This is why it makes it a little bit more simple for people who don't like, you know, like tech that much. Um, it will tell you on there if it's JSON or XML on the posting document. Um, so just select the one that it says. Uh, most I work, I work with a JSON, uh, but sometimes you, you you get a few XMLs in there, and it's just it's just the language that the CRM speaks. So don't worry too much about that because Zapier does all that in the background. Um, then next up is where you map your fields. Now field mapping is where you get your uh, the field in your client CRM mapped to the field in your Unbounce form, basically. So your unbounce form should have custom fields in there. You should have built that out. And this is where you're mapping the two. So when the data is sent, it sends that um, the correct unbounce field into their CRM field, okay? Um, so on the left-hand side, this is your client's fields you're putting in. So these are my lead byte fields that I've set up inside lead byte. And on the right-hand side, this is where you put your dynamic values from your unbounce um, form so this is this is a lot simpler to do than actually like writing out script um which sometimes i've had to do um in lead took you'll need to do uh the script version so you'll need to know you know um how to write in json or xml normally they do give you a snippet in the posting document so that should help but if you're totally averse to doing anything like that um, then this makes it a bit more simpler because you can just uh, basically you click in there, you go to your unbounce submission and you find first first name or full name, whatever, and then you just add it in like so. Very simple. Um, and then you just want to match up all the correct um, data points. Uh, you can have as many in here as you want. I'd, I haven't asked for phone or website URL in this, so I'm going to get rid of these two. Uh, you you, you want to make sure every single one has got uh, data in it. Then um, every single CRM will have certain fields that are static. Now, what I mean by static is that it will be the same for every single lead that comes through. There'll be no dynamic. You won't, you won't be picking uh, things from Unbounce. It will be static like, like, like this, yeah? These are specific uh, fields inside the CRM that tells the client, um, because they may be buying leads from a lot of different providers, these tell the client that these are your leads uh, and then basically that's how they can feedback how your leads are converting. Uh, you know, if they owe you anything on the back end, they'll, they'll know exactly which leads are yours. So it's very important to get that stuff in. Some will have just one or two ident ident identifiers. Some will have five. Um, obviously in lead Byte, there's a few more because obviously I've added in um, uh, the kind of the source uh, and the supplier ID and things like that. Um, these are the only two you desperately need for lead byte, SID and campaign ID. Um, the, the other two I add just to give a bit more uh, information. Um, but if you're doing it to a client, it's normally going to be um, one or two, one or two identifiers. So it'll be like kind of like the name of your brand, if you're running a brand, uh, and then a unique uh, supplier ID, which is basically what this is for lead byte. This tells you who the supplier is and you may just have like a, a number it may be a code um, but they'll they'll let you know in the posting document that you do not change that basically um and yeah and, and these are a few more fields that i've added in um 
but basically every field that they want you basically want to map to um, and yeah that's a that's a chat for the client that you want to have they will normally ask to ask for your fields in your form you just send over to them and then they send you the document with all the all of their fields that you can map to those fields kind of thing um, so it, it does seem harder than it actually is especially when you're using Zapier and it's quite a simple way of doing it um, it's not the best way of doing it uh, I know a lot of uh, devs would probably like bulk at the thought of people using Zapier for their um, web hooks but it works perfectly fine um, and yeah it's good for a beginner who's kind of doing this kind of stuff and then you can move your way up basically uh, they normally wrap request an array I normally have that as no uh, I don't have a file in there unflatten yes basic authentication don't have any, anything here now the headers is somewhere else you're going to need to add something uh, these are just headers that basically uh, that should be given it in the posting document um, I know go high level so basically with every link there is an API key that allows you to send information to that URL if you don't have the key you can't unlock the door and the leads will not go to that URL basically this key allows your leads to be accepted at that URL destination and get put into the CRM so it's very important you have an API key the two things I always look out for from a client doc is the API key and the URL uh, the posting URL um, now your key will go in here so it'll be a long bit of code like this um, your headers are going to be what that CRM knows that key as. So it's, it's, it's the custom field the key is identified by. So on lead byte, it's X underscore key. I know on um, Go level, it's just authorization with a capital A. Uh, some will just be API underscore key. Uh, that will be in your posting document. Um, now some will have multiple headers that you need to, to put in and they'll, and they'll tell you this, the, the headers, and you make sure you put it in the header section, not up here, make sure you put it in the header section. So there could be like more API key stuff down here. I've had as many as four down there that they wanted to put in. Um, but lead by only needs one header, which is the, the key field. Um, and then you press continue. Uh, and then you do want to test it. You want to send a test lead through. Now you can either test it here or you we can turn it on and then you test it by submitting your lead form. I would recommend doing both. So I would test the action here. Okay. Cool. So basically this is where it's good. This will um, show you the response from um, the CRM. Now this is very important to, to get right. So it should it should say status okay code normally two hundred two hundred is the is the code that says it's been posted fine, um, but if you see this, then you want to kind of see what's going on. Lead was de detected as a duplicate. So obviously, I've already posted my personal information into our Leadbyte account, and I've got it set up in Leadbyte where we don't allow duplicates. So let me just go and delete that out of Leadbyte one second. There we go. So I delete it out of um, uh, lead byte and press retest, and it's come through. This is what it should come through as uh, success. Okay, uh, codes one. Okay, that's fair enough. Uh, message is okay, and you can come and see that it's been approved. Da -da -da -da. Buyers, it will tell you who's bought it. In this is in lead byte, uh, and it will give you uh, the data that's been pushed through. Okay, so on your client one, that should give you um, a posting. Or a status kind of status update now if there is any issue and you can't get it to work um, what we normally do is we would uh, go back to the web dev and say hey set up the set up the, the, the web hook this is the response I got when I sent a lead through um, FYI you know do you know what's going on uh, and then they'll work with you uh, to, to get it sorted um, but normally it, it, it works fine uh, and this is very important to get the messaging and un un understanding why it's being blocked. Most of the time, if it's being blocked, it's because um, either something's not formatted right uh, or it's uh, not in the you know correct format. Um, a lot of them will come through saying that they want it in string format. Um, that's pretty much what I post everything in, in string format. 
Um, don't ask me what that means. Uh, I'm not actually 100% sure, but it's a way to format the data that comes through. So you can either have text, number, string, uh, postcode, tele so on and so, so forth. I only post every, everything as string. Sometimes they'll want it posted as um, postcode or telephone number, um, but in Zapier, they, they sort all that out for you. Um, there's no, you, 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 you don't put that in basically. So yeah, um, so if you want to use a catch hook, you can use a catch hook as I just showed you. Uh, and then if they don't have an app inside um, Zapier that they use, or it's just going to be a faff to try and get their logins and anything like that, the ideal way is to get a catch hook and then post the webhook as the second action, uh, like so. Okay. Um, again, it, it seems more daunting than it is, but definitely give it a go. Um, it, it, it works really well and it's the best way of providing leads to a client. Um, and when you get more clients, then you can just uh, post just to lead by it. And then in lead by it, um, you can then post out to multiple different clients using pretty much the exact way of doing it as, as, as we've done here. Uh, it's quite simple to do it in, in lead by it. Again, uh, you need maybe a bit of code, uh, but they have loads, loads of different ways that they can send, um, they can send, uh, leads out so you can do it by a sheet stuff like that um but this this is a great way of learning how to do webhooks and it, it is important in marketing i've had to use this quite a lot um and it's a great first stepping stone doing it like this okay guys well hopefully this has been really helpful um let me know if you have any questions and i'll be happy to try and get back to you um but yeah guys thanks a lot and i'll see you in the next one cheers Okay, I hope you've enjoyed the video from Graham. He's got a very effective way about teaching something that's relatively complex and making it easy for um, people to understand. So I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have any questions for him at all, comment below. If you've liked this video and you want more like it, then please like our, our like the video, smash that like button below. And finally, please subscribe to our channel if, you're, if you wanna be the first to know whenever we create our new content. I'll speak to you soon.